pages 201 to 203 before uh, you listen to me. So number four on page 60 of your little atheist book uh, uh, says, uh, says this. Uh, what was Benedict Spinoza's objection to miracles and why was he dead and wrong? So, well, oh no, that's, I, I need to go back. I'm on the book. I'm sorry. We're on the book. I'm sorry. I was like, what? We haven't done Benedict. But get, get ready for Benedict Spinoza because we're going back to philosophy again. Uh, uh, so number three on the emboldened. Uh, what do we know about God from the moral argument? We already did that. We did it yesterday. Okay. Define. I'll get there eventually. I'm tired. Uh, define what miracles are and explain why you believe they are possible. So first let's define what is a miracle. Uh, uh, yeah. A special act of God that interrupts the normal course of events. Anything else that the book says a, a miracle is? Something that was never happened. Yeah, it, it, it could never happen naturally. A, a, a miracle is something that could never happen naturally. So we think of the miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. There's no way that that, that could have happened naturally. Now, it could be that he was just mostly dead that he was just badly injured, which some people did, uh, claim in the case of Jesus' resurrection. We'll get to that eventually. Um, but if he truly was dead, there's no natural way for him to be revived. Uh, so the other thing about miracles um, is that, that logically, if God exists, miracles make sense. If there is a God, and if he created the whole universe, we have proof, then, of miracles just in the creation of the universe, which the book calls the greatest miracle of all. So that is evidence um, for, for miracles. Uh, number five, why do you think so many people today don't believe in miracles? They don't see it themselves. Yeah, yeah they've never seen one or disbelieve uh, stories of them. Or, and sometimes they, you know, can make up reasons why, well, that could have happened this way, or that could have been a trip. Oh. There, there are nefarious people that pretend to make do miracles. And some of them even call themselves Christians. But that's not true. Yes? I was going to say Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if the default worldview is atheism, is that there is no God, and everything is natural. There's, there's nothing beyond the natural. And, and miracles are something that are supernatural, that are beyond the natural. But ultimately, all of it is a decision of the will, a decision to choose not to believe in God, just as in God. Um, and as the book told us earlier on, that, that I'm not going to say most atheists, because I don't know most atheists, but for some atheists, they just don't want to believe. Because if there is a God, that means that they have to yield to him. 
or, or he might require something of them. And as one uh, atheist put it in our book early on, I, I want to be able to sleep with whoever I want. I don't want to believe that. It's a very honest admission, uh, but I don't think it's um, an uncommon thing. People just want to live the way they would want to live and don't want to be beholden to uh, a higher power. Um, and then another way of uh, defining uh, miracles uh, would be an act of God to confirm the word uh, of God through a messenger of God. Uh, that's another uh, definition. So, um, let's now go on to the quick questions one through three. Um, this first question, most of it can be answered from pages 201 and 202. There's one part of it that comes from 210 to 212. We'll come back to that when we read that. Uh, but um, the first thing is, and, and the, actually what I just said is an answer to, to question one. So what is a miracle? And, and I already said an act of God to confirm the word of God through a messenger of an act of God to confirm the word of God through a messenger of God. And then we also mentioned that it's uh, a special act of God that interrupts the normal course of events. Um, I think I probably told you this but um, in terms of my life, it's one of the most, I don't remember it, but uh, one of the most um, important miracles that, that I've been associated with. Um, when my next youngest sister lives in Switzerland, when she was born, she was born to die. Uh, she was born blue, she wasn't breathing, she had a count of two on the APGAR. I don't know if you look at APGAR is, but it's a, a test of different things to see how well the baby is thriving. Uh, and a two is a very dire. It's, it's, it's zero to ten. Uh, and zero would be one still. Um, and so my, my mother was told that Georgiana was going to die. Her name was supposed to be Catherine, uh, but my mother thought she wanted to give her daughter something before she died, and so she gave her her name, Georgiana. Um, and Georgiana was my mother's name. Um, but she pulled through. She was a very strong woman, and she also um, survived meningitis at age 20. I was supposed to survive so, uh, but this going back to her birth, um, she she pulled through, but the doctor said that she would never walk, and she was the, the term back then was profoundly mentally retarded. So she had profound uh, cognitive and um, and motor uh, deficits, uh, and she had frequency. And so they finally sent my mother home and said, come back tomorrow and we'll teach you how to take care of her when she has her seizures. And my mom went home uh, and she was on her prayer bench. Uh, it was a family heirloom. It was a little, um, if you ever see like kneelers and then there's a little, like, like it would be like this if it was shorter, then you kneel and there's this little place to put something. It was like that, kind of in a family family. Room. And she was kneeling on that and praying for Georgiana on the telephone. Room. My dad answered it. And my mom said that in the moment that my dad answered that phone, that there was a light and a presence around her that she had never experienced before and that she never experienced again. Um, and she knew it was the presence of God. And she heard my father say, you're kidding. You're kidding. And what the doctor said to him was, 
from uh, there's been a miracle in the night. Now it's been a miracle in the night. I'll pick up your prayer. Uh, and indeed, she is to this day the most brilliant human being I know, I personally know. Um, God does. Now, can I prove that's a miracle? And the doctor said it was a miracle, but that's kind of where we were. Things to do. Um, but I believe that that had nature taken its way to the course. And that would have been for me as a Um, and so, um, yeah, it's it's something that interrupts the the normal um, course of events. Uh, and then question two: What did Ronald Nash say to the Russians that opened their eyes to the fact that the box, the universe, is open? And created by God. What did he have? A closed box and an open box. What did he say of the closed box? Yeah, so, so that the universe is closed, that all there is is the universe. The, the physical universe, the natural universe, and there's nothing outside that. There's nothing supernatural. There's nothing that can change, can alter nature. And what did the open box represent? Yeah, there's something outside of the universe that can alter or can control what is inside the box. That what is outside the universe God, whatever it's called, um, can interact within the universe. Which, in a sense, makes sense. Because if you create something, right, it's yours, and you can do it what you want. By the way, you have your, uh, your posters over there, and you can take them, and you can do whatever you want with them, can't you? It's yours, right? And there's several people that I've asked um, if I can keep their posters, but guess what? If they say, no, I want to keep it, I'm not going to say, well, no, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to, no, it's theirs. It belongs to them. Of course they can have it. They can do whatever they want. They can say, no, I don't want to give it to you. I want to keep it and then go put it in the dumpster. They have every right to do that, don't they? And then so if there is a God beyond this universe who created not only is the universe his, but everything in it. And whether we realize it or not. Uh, so uh, and, and he he can um, do whatever he wants. He's got anything on that? Uh, number three. Uh, what is the greatest miracle, and why would that set a precedent for all other miracles? So let's start with what's the greatest miracle ever. Yeah, the, the, the creation of the universe out of nothing. There are a lot of miracles, but generally those miracles take something that's already there 
and make it better or heal it or whatever. Like with my sister, she was born and she was healed. But the miracle wasn't just the materialization of a baby out of nowhere, right? Um, so uh, it's the greatest miracle because it's a miracle of creation. There was nothing, and suddenly there was something. Um, and uh, so that that is uh, the greatest miracle. You want to remember that because you will see that on tests. And for some reason, I never fully understood. A lot of people get it wrong. They say something like Jesus, you know, resurrection, or something like that. which is great. It's a great miracle. Don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful for it. Uh, but this is the correct answer. The creation of the universe out of nothing. Yeah, so, so if we have a God who is powerful enough to create the universe out of nothing, surely nothing is outside of his power, beyond his power. Nothing is too difficult. Hey, do you have any questions? Okay, excellent. Um, the other thing I want to tell you, because you do have a little time here too, um, the board is now yours. Um, and first it needs to be clean. So if anyone has interest, now we're going to keep um, Mrs. Schrock's thing there, and they will be called uh, Oaks of Righteousness. The rest of it, um, if there's something that someone really wants to keep up there, that's fine. I'd rather not have the Mrs. But, um, but uh, you can prepare that board, and, and it's yours for um, the, the rest of the board. Okay? Okay. Uh, let's see. I've got the juice over here. I think I need to go get some... Um, I think I used all of my paper towels. So let me go get paper towels and I'll be right back and you can work on that. Remember to read pages 201, 203.